Today, we're gonna to take a look at the differences between the mesh modeling tool sets inside of SOLIDWORKS versus a dedicated reverse engineering software for 3D scan data, which is mesh to surface for SOLIDWORKS. So we'll start off by looking at the surface for mesh tool inside of SOLIDWORKS. And this tool is built for you to be able to uh, quickly create plain and cylindrical features directly from a mesh body. We can select a few facets of a polygonal mesh and it'll automatically find the planar or cylindrical surface that outlines that area and build that for us as a surface body. Uh, so we'll do that to a planar surface as well as a cylindrical surface. And what we'll notice is uh, this tool set is great when you're using it for 3D printing type applications where we've generated a mesh from a pre-existing CAD file. But when we're working with real world objects that we have created with a 3D scanner, then the 3D scan data and the real world part have inconsistencies that can cause this tool set a little bit of trouble. As we look at those features, we can see that we do have a cylindrical feature as well as a planar feature. Uh, however, those features are rough around the edges and uh, not necessarily ideal for reverse engineering applications. So let's talk about another tool, which is the decimation tool inside of the mesh modeling tab in SOLIDWORKS. And this process is used quite frequently in reverse engineering 3D scan data, where we have a relatively large scan file that we need to reduce the file size of. For the decimation process in SOLIDWORKS, it works. It is a little slow. Uh, generally speaking, for meshes that we're importing that are between 10,000 to half a million polygonal faces, the time frame can be anywhere from uh, roughly 20 seconds to a few minutes to decimate that model. Uh, when we see the comparison of that uh, to mesh to surface, which does it almost instantaneously, you can see that there are definitely some advantages to the mesh to surface tool set. Now, everything that we're going to be doing in this video is going to be uh, at real time. So uh, there are going to be certain aspects that we'll get into from the reverse engineering side for mesh to surface that's uh, purposely done so you can see a real world comparison of speeds from uh, one software to the next. The last thing that we're gonna take a look at inside of the mesh modeling tools for SOLIDWORKS is the body compare feature. So this feature is really useful when we build out uh, various surface bodies to check the deviation to the real world part. This is relatively simple to use we can select our source body, which will be our mesh model, and then our comparison body, which is gonna be our surface from the mesh. And once that's been selected, we can simply hide off the mesh body and we'll see a color map on that surface body that we can adjust based on the parameters or the tolerances that we're trying to hold when we're generating out that model. So now let's jump over to mesh to surface and see how the features or the tool sets rather compare uh, to what we've seen directly inside of SOLIDWORKS and then some of the other things that we can do on a more prismatic parametric model like the object shown on screen. So here we can see our model that we've imported into mesh to surface and immediately upon clicking that decimate button, you can see that we've already decimated our file in just a matter of uh, less than a second. It's a very efficient process for a file of this size and is extremely efficient for files much larger than uh, this. Then we can go into generating out our various primitive shapes. So whether that's a plane or a cylinder, we have our magic wand that we use to select the geometry that we want to build that feature off of. Uh, and additionally, we can constrain features to one another, which is very important for us when we're dealing with real world models. 
not only can we do that, uh, but we can do a direct deviation of those features inside of the tool, making it a very efficient process for us to do everything that we previously saw inside of SOLIDWORKS all within just a couple of tool sets here in Mesh to Surface. So uh, moving on from what we can do uh, comparatively from Mesh to Surface to the native SOLIDWORKS tools, let's walk through a basic workflow of building out a uh, prismatic mo model like this, a prismatic object, and generating that from the ground up. So let's walk through a basic workflow of building out a more mechanical part like this inside of Mesh Surface for SOLIDWORKS. So the first thing that we like to do is generate a cross section of that part. And ideally we wanna generate a cross section across the uh, largest portion of that part that we want to build initially. Now with a part like this, we'll notice that there's no one individual cross section that's really gonna work for us to get that profile from. Uh, inside of Mesh Surface for SOLIDWORKS, we have our outline feature that allows us to automatically cal calculate the silhouette of that object to very quickly and easily build our sketch from. Once we build that outline, we'll just hide off our mesh. Uh, and then from that outline feature, we can use our Fit Sketch Entities tools to quickly create geometry from our part. So we'll go ahead and select the geometry that we want with our uh, instant fit uh, tool set inside of our fit sketch entities tool in mesh to surface. And very quickly, you can see we can just select the line features that we want to create. If we want to create circle features, we can easily just select the locations where those features are. And then we have those as SOLIDWORKS sketch entities all ready to go where we can go ahead and start trimming everything together. So there's different ways to build out parts like this. Traditionally speaking, uh, personally, I like to leave the fillets outside of the actual uh, feature selection process when we're using our Fit Sketch Entities tool and just add those in man manually. But that is entirely user preference as to whether or not to uh, fit those in when you're using the Fit Sketch Entities tool, or if you want to create them as fillets like I'm doing right here. So once we build out all of these basic features, we'll see uh, we have our rough profile of our part that we can go ahead and extrude out into a solid body. So we'll go ahead and just extrude this part out, uh, you can either uh, get extremely precise by creating a reference plane to extrude to, or for a lot of parts, we're gonna have specific dimensions that we already uh, have a rough idea of what those should be that we can extrude directly to, just like we did here. And from there, let's go ahead and do an initial 3D compare of the geometry that we've created. So we can see where we may need to make some adjustments to the model, or if we're happy we're things are currently, then we can go ahead and just leave it as is. As you can see, this is a worn part. Uh, so we will be just recreating it from the specs that we're using on this CAD model and not trying to add in that weird, that worn deviation. So next we'll go ahead and create a, another, uh, sketch for this part. Uh, for this, we'll go ahead and create the uh, extruded cuts that will make up the upper portion of our object. To do that, uh, we can simply select a plane that we want to build a cross section off of. And just like that, we can go ahead and find that profile, build out our cross section. And just like we did before, we'll create some geometry, go ahead and extrude that geometry. This time we'll extrude it out as a cut and then we can continue that process throughout the entirety of the part. For the purposes of this video, we'll just be cutting away the two sides of the part and then showing a 3D comparison. But if you want a more in-depth uh, video series on reverse engineering parts, we do have that as well in our video resources.
So just like that, we have the basic construction of our part. And we'll go ahead and do a, a 3D comparison to check where we are from a standpoint of our accuracy to the physical part. And to continue this process, we would just cut away more material and uh, finish off building out our object. If you have any questions on uh, using mesh to surface as a reverse engineering tool set for SOLIDWORKS or any other questions relating to 3D scanning, feel free to let us know. Thanks for watching this video.